What's the word, y'all? Since the start of the NBA season, I've been in San Francisco, I've been in LA, I've been in New York City, but I haven't been here to talk all things hoops. Now, I apologize for that, but we finally home, and from what I understand, I ain't got no more travel for the next month or so, so we're back on our grind to talk things hoops. Leave a like. When I was just in New York, we did a pop-up shop for Enjoy Basketball. It was great. Shout out, shout out to the team, and shout out to everybody that pulled up. Um, it was amazing to talk to all of the people um, that have been supporting for years, to tell me their stories and all of this, man. And, and I got back to my hotel, and I legitimately cried tears of joy or admiration. I don't really know exactly what it was, but I was filled with emotion to look at how much we've grown over the last 10 years of me making content. And I know this is not about basketball technically, but I just want to say I appreciate you for your continued support every single season, whether it be on this channel or any of my other ones. Seriously, love all of y'all. Um, but okay, let's get into the stuff. After uh, I promote the newsletter, we got the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. We drop Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all things hoop. If you want to keep up with hoops, this is the way to do it. I know you watch these videos to hear my takes, but I really recommend the newsletter because today we had a, a crazy slate and I won't be able to talk about every single game, but the newsletter fills in those gaps and we got some amazing writers and content creators. So we're trying to get to 40,000. We're extremely close. So if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, hit the link in the description. It'll mean a ton to me. All right, we're going to start off this one talking about the Brooklyn Nets because boy, oh boy, are things, they, they've been embarrassing, but it's getting even worse. Today, they lost to the Indiana Pacers, a young, talented team. Shout out to the Pacers. Let me get them their flowers right now before we talk trash about the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, enjoy basketball. Uh, let's let's give, us our, give them their flowers because uh, the young court that they are building right now is so good. So yesterday, they played a game on national TV against the Washington, which they pulled out, and then they got that win, and they flew to Brooklyn, and you wouldn't have known that they were on the second end of a back-to-back -back because they took out the Brooklyn Nets. Benedict Matherin is a stud and fearless. Tyrese Halliburton is one of the most fun players to watch as well because you cannot speed him up. He's going to go at his pace, and he's going to hit his shots, and he's going to play make for his teammates, and he's going to say Monte Morris is too little. They both went to Iowa State, so I'm assuming they have some type of connection, but I don't know for sure. He's going to talk his trash, and they got some they got some dogs over there in Indian. This is a team that I thought, and this might still be true because we're only two weeks to the season, a team that I thought was going to buy them out because they want to continue to build that core but through the first two weeks they have been competitive in a lot of their games i mean the bulls were up at like 50 against them and they almost came back to one last week and they came into brooklyn and hit like a crazy amount i think they set records for the most amount of threes that they've hit in a long time so uh shout out to them let's talk brooklyn nets though because it is getting really really bad so there are a couple different pillars i want to start off by saying i am not talking about any of the off-court stuff because the brooklyn nets it's always something bro it is always something off the court and i'm extremely disappointed in the situation but that's not what this channel is about we're going to strictly talk to talk about the hoops because that's what this is this is what we do um when i was in new york i went to brooklyn versus dallas and it was the best experience i've ever had as far as an uh, nba fan being in the arena we went to overtime and then luke had a 40 point triple double if you have the opportunity to see luca play live please do it go out there go watch luca because you're already amazed when you watch him on tv but to actually see it and get in the atmosphere of the arena it's nothing like it luca's just an absolute dog and you know what the uh, brooklyn nets don't have dogs they, they, just, they just don't and man that feels like i don't know there's like this sub genre of nba fans that have that oh, oh man if he ain't got the dog in him oh his bag is deep that's not who even who i am but i look at that Brooklyn Nets lineup and I'm, I'm watching them and they know how to do that super fiery you know what I'm saying and I think that plays a part I think the number one thing that's wrong with the Brooklyn Nets as of right now is Steve Nash listen KD wanted him fired like three weeks ago and they they, they washed over it we gonna Joe Sy said we sticking with our dudes which is cool I committed him for that because if he believed that Steve Nash Sean Marks were the two guys for his organization I'm happy he didn't fold into KD but now we six games to the season and the team looks like and has been one of the worst teams on court Offensively and defensively, you cannot tell me a team that has KD and Kyrie Irving should be one of the worst offensive teams in basketball, but here they are. And they also one of the worst defensive teams in basketball. They don't guard the three and they don't guard the paint. That Those are the two most important things of defense in basketball, and they don't do either of the two. They don't shoot the three ball well, and I'm assuming it's going to come back up because Joe Harris has missed a bunch of time. He's just coming back. Um, Seth, Seth Curry literally had his first game. So these are some of the best shooters in all of basketball that are on their roster, and I'm sure they're going to get the numbers up. Even Kyrie Irving, known as a great three-point shooter, he hasn't been able to put it together. I'm sure those three-point numbers will come up, but they can't hit threes. They can't guard threes, and they're about as paper thin down low. One thing I do want to give Steve Nash a little bit of credit for, um, in the last two games, he basically told Dayron Sharp, you're reserved right now, because the Dayron Sharp minutes throughout the first three three games or so was dreadful, especially when they were pairing him with Ben Simmons. Are you kidding me? And then in the game that I went to, they kind of neutralized the Nick Claxton and Ben Simmons menace and I was like okay Steve Nash trying to figure it out and then we get back here and they can't put together four competent quarters of basketball every single one of these games they right there 
and you think, hey, I got KD and Kyrie. Once we right there, once we get to the last three minutes, we're going to be fine. No, no. Steve Nash has done a terrible job. We, we see these... These former players get coaching opportunities, and it's, in a lot of cases, it's really good. Some of the best coaches in basketball right now are former NBA players. But one thing that a lot of those people have is experience on the bench before they got the head coaching job, right? I mean, there are a few that's like, oh, we just threw him into the fire. Steve Nash is one of the guys they threw into the fire, and he has not been good, bro. This man, la I got some, oh, man, I got some notes. He complained last season, KD's minutes are too damn high. Steve. Do you understand? You are the coach, my boy. You can you can sit KD down a couple extra minutes. So Steve Nash has done a terrible job of like getting his players to rally behind him. They did a players only meeting today after the game. So maybe that helps something. But it, I mean, we can't look past the fact that your star player wanted you gone. And now we five games to the six games to the season and y'all are completely underperforming. Like I would not be surprised if Steve Nash is, is getting is getting fired, but I can also see a world where Joe Sy gets kind of stubborn because he made the decision this offseason to keep Steve Nash around. Pillar number two is Ben Simmons. Now, <laughs> hey, be honest with you, this has been Simmons' best game as a Brooklyn net. He scored nine points. Next game, he might hit double digits. This was his best game of the season. And I am, I am, I'm not here to bash Ben Simmons because I do believe in, in time he would consistently get better. I don't know if we'll ever get back to the 16 point per game Ben Simmons. I don't know if we'll ever get back to the guy that was all NBA third team early in his career. But the version we're getting right now is a third, is a fourth of even that version of Ben. And that version of him, Ben had his deficiencies. When I was at this game, Luka Doncic was hunting Ben Simmons defensively. Ben Simmons is usually a guy you don't want guarding your best player. Nah, Luka's a different breed, but like they were going at Ben Simmons. And, and every single game, they have this, this, this idea that we're going to run through Ben for the first couple possessions to get his confidence up. And he'll score the first basket. The crowd erupts, and then he might score another basket in the first quarter, and he never looks at the rim again. I've been seeing people say, like, okay, Kenny, his defense has been solid. I'll give him that. He's still Ben Simmons, even though Luka was roasting his ass. He got a big steal at the end of that game that led to overtime. So shout out to him. Defense has been okay. But people are like, Kenny, his playmaking looks really good. <sighs> it looks all right. You know, he had... Nine points, nine assists, eight rebounds today. Near triple double. Shout out to Ben. But like his his assist numbers are definitely inflated. Let, let me show you what I mean. I'll show you one example. But this this set, I'm not an X's and O's guy. It's something Steve Nash and his team runs a ton. They ran it a ton this game. And out of Ben Simmons's nine assists, five of them were through this. And I can see you making an argument, Kenny. This is real life playmaking. But you you tell me what you think. So they run this, and this time Ben Simmons is sitting in that corner, give it up to Kyrie who gives it back up to Ben, and it's basically a dribble handoff screen that leads to an assist. And a couple of these times, it was like this, same same pretty much action, just a different spot, hand it off to KD, and KD's good enough to hit a heavily contested double-team three-pointer, and Ben Simmons gets an assist. Now, he did get a, a couple really good backdoor cuts that he hit KD for and things like that, but like I'm saying, the numbers are slightly inflated. Either way, they're paper thin down low. Um, and they, they need a new coach or something. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a month into the season, the team still ain't hitting their expectations and Joe Sy slash Sean Marks decides to blow it up because they probably should have done it this offseason considering all the things that happened. So that's enough Brooklyn Nets talk. Let's talk about some of the other games of the day. The Sacramento Kings finally got their first win and it happened to be against the Miami Heat who are two and five on the year. I want to give a lot of love to the Kings because it finally happened. They are lo no longer one of the winless teams in basketball, even though they did everything in their power to get, get this game away. We got to the third quarter. They had to have 10, uh, 10 turnovers in that quarter alone. And the Brooklyn Nets, oh, not the Brooklyn Nets, the Miami Heat were doing a good job of turning the ball over or getting the turnovers and turning that into to buckets for them. But at the end of the day, that, that man, Red Velvet, came to play, man. And uh, the rookie, Keegan Murray being in that lineup for the last couple games, he had another 22-piece game, and De'Aaron Fox continues to look pretty solid. Um, not his best efficiency night, but he had a couple buckets down the stretch that were really important, and they finally get on the board. I was saying they were the best-looking winless team left in basketball, and now they're no longer winless. Shout out to them. Are the Heat cooked? Oh, man, it's hard to even say. I've been getting that a lot. They don't look very good. Now, in their defense, they've had a relatively tough schedule so far, but this is a game against the winless Kings that you should win if you're the Miami Heat. Um, but yeah, they've lost against some really good teams so far, so I, it's still too early for me to tell. I just know when this, once the half quarter offense comes around, it's a bit rough on the edges. You know what I'm saying? So give me give me a couple more games to watch Miami Heat before I have a full opinion on whether or not it's wraps. I said before the season that I didn't see them as a contender, though. But right now, they're not even in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's going to go that far. But, man, the Charlotte Hornets beat the Golden State Warriors. Whoa! Um, 
another team that I was super low on going into the season, the, the Charlotte Hornets, and they continue to impress. Dennis Smith Jr. is one of the best stories in basketball. He said that he was basically out of the league and he didn't want to go play overseas no matter what. He was training to join the, the NFL. He was putting on muscle. And right now, they're a 500 team, which is Charlotte Hornets to a T. 500 team. That's what, they, that's what they usually are, which is, again, I don't really love it. But so far throughout the season, Gordon Hayward has looked really good. Um, he's been an all-star caliber player throughout the course of this. Like, if, this, if the all-star game was today, he'd probably make the Eastern Conference team. But the real MVP of all this was P.J. Washington. He ended up with 31.7 rebounds. And the most important stat that's not on the stat sheet is he won three jump balls this game. And all in overtime. Three of them that led to possessions, that led to points to close out this game. So, he, he beat Wiggins. I think he beat Draymond on one, and I forget what the last one was. He won all of his jump balls. I, I'm still a huge fan. Didn't know I was going to become a Nick Richards guy. He has really played himself into the rotation after two years of not really being in that and, like, getting quality, quality minutes. Now, they start, they close the game out being small because they're going against the Golden State Warriors. Um, but the Warriors' defense so far this season has been really weird, man. Um, both of the top two teams defensively last year with the Brooklyn Nat. Nope. I keep doing that. Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors are struggling out the gate defensively. I kind of see the Boston Celtics one because you're missing Robert Williams, who is such a critical, critical part of your defense. But the Warriors aren't missing one of their pillar defensive guys. Now, they are running more people than they probably want to, with like Ty Jerome getting minutes or Jermichael Green getting 15, 16 minutes per game. But the defense hasn't been good. Um, and I don't, I'm don't, i not hitting the panic button because they're the Warriors, and I feel like they can snap it on like that. But we have to remember that in the second half of the regular season last year, this is basically what they were looking like. We got to the playoffs and everything was different, but this is the version of them that we got like the last couple months of the season. We need them to hit that switch. I will say, once we got to overtime, Draymond Green was everywhere, which is a good sign. Um, but we made a TikTok about this on our, our podcast platform it's through the wire podcast and i got a lot of flack for it but i they asked me what nba player do i think will disappoint this season and my answer was clay thompson and it was it wasn't like oh kenny hates clay i've been a fan of clay since he's been in the league bro. i'm a big fan of clay but i do believe that people saw them win a championship which was dope he had a couple really big moments in that and then gave him one off season it was like okay now clay should be back to clay and i think it's gonna take way more time than that and he might not ever get back to the clay thompson that was making all-star teams and things like that but I, I didn't expect clay to come into the season and look like the old version of him and so far i've been kind of right on that um but luckily jordan Poole has looked really good wiggins has been really good this season um, but man, I, I just, you know, I just want to give Klay Thompson more time. That's all. The Bulls nearly beat the 76ers, man. This man, Joel Embiid, absolutely hates the city of Chicago. Or he loves it. It's one or the other. We have not beat this man in his entire NBA career. I think it's 9-0 now might be the record. If he is suited enough for the 76ers going against the Chicago Bulls, we basically stand no chance. And it's, he hit the biggest shot of the game. But we were so in this one. We were missing Lonzo. We were missing Ayo Desumo. We were missing Drummond. Maybe it's better that we were missing Drummond because Joel Embiid and Drummond, I mean, Drummond loses that matchup 100% of the time. Boy, I really wanted this win. Both teams are coming off a of back-to-back. You can really feel that energy, bro. They, It was not a pretty, pretty game. But I love the games that we're getting from Nikola Vucevic. He hit five threes. He had 19 rebounds. And I would argue his defense was really solid tonight. I think they had a good defensive plan to go against Joel Embiid. But Joel Embiid is still decent you know no wait, wait that's disrespectful he's still elite um and out of all the people that played tonight he's the only one with fresh legs because he didn't play last night uh you saw that and they got a they got a much needed win in my opinion and the bulls didn't but i'm starting to think that the bulls are going to be pretty solid once we finally get healthy it's just a matter of when that's going to happen i think Giannis is on the road to winning his third mvp tonight he had 34 17 and four assists now I tweeted that. I tweeted that that Giannis is going on to to his third MVP. You know, based on the first two weeks of the season, and I got a ton of Atlanta Hawks fans like it's Kenny. He gets all the crazy whispers. Now he did attempt 19 free throws in this game, um, and I went back. I went back because I was like, okay, let me let me see what that referee whistle is really looking like. And I watched all of the fouls in the second half. Cause first half, I don't care. I don't think I think he had four points in the second half or something like that. It was the second half. Oh, in the first half. In the second half, he really came out to play. There's always when you have a guy as physically dominating as Giannis he is going to be extremely hard to officiate for we saw the same thing with LeBron we saw the same thing with Shaquille O'Neal when we have these bulldozer freight train level players there's gonna be times where he's bulldozing to the paint and, and the referees have to figure out on the fly if the contact was enough to warrant a foul when in reality every single time Giannis goes to the basket he's getting fouled it's just the nature it's just the nature of the way he plays the game but it's a matter of do we call it now do we not and sometimes 
sometimes he's not getting fouled, but they're anticipating the foul and they blow the whistle. You know what I'm saying? In this game, like I said, I, I, we watched all these fouls. There were a couple that were maybe a little bit iffy, but I don't think that's the reason y'all lost this game. This is a really good game for the Atlanta Hawks, man. For the first X amount of games of the season, the Atlanta Hawks look really good, but they've also played against really okay talent and not one of the elite teams. They held their own against a very, very elite, one of the last, I don't know, the last undefeated team in basketball. They should be proud of that. Obviously, you can't say we're happy that we lost, but like for a team that made a big time move this offseason to go against the team that a lot of people picked to win a championship, including me, and hold your own is a good sign, and I wouldn't be mad if this a seven game series drew holiday was amazing Giannis was amazing trey young was elite and one of my favorite things that i saw that makes me feel really good about this atlanta hawks team and, and is trey young was taking over did i think he missed two shots in the fourth and then Dejounte hit one i'm like man trey young didn't have that trey young didn't have that extra guy to take off a little bit of pressure once you know he was a little bit gassed and you got that today so i feel good about the atlanta hawks even though they didn't win this one the milwaukee bucks are undefeated their offense still ain't completely put together yet the defense is elite um, Brooke Lopez. I, I haven't mentioned Brooke Lopez's name on any of the videos so far to, uh, in this series, but his defense has been really good. I always give a lot of love to Drew as a one-on-one -on -one defender and a lot of love to Giannis as the best help defender in basketball, but I do need to give love to just a straight-up paint-protecting big in Brooke Lopez. The defense has been really good. The offense ain't even been put together, and eventually Chris Middleton's going to be back. I mean, come on, man. Like, the team is ridiculous. Now, these last two games of the night, I wasn't able to watch unfortunately me is one of the captains of the non thunder fan okc fan club i feel like i haven't done my due diligence in watching shea this season i'm i'm tuning in because with five minutes left in this game they were down by 15 and they came back to win this game somehow and i see shea jump shot i uh isaiah joe i see a lot of isaiah joe in this this box i gotta go back and watch at least the five minutes plus overtime because uh, it looked like they did their thing. And I think, was was Luca in the Dortcher chamber? 35% from the field? He might have been in the Dortcher chamber. I'm going to watch that with Thunder fans, I promise. And then lastly, um, the Utah Jazz won a game. And I was excited about this one. And I found out Ja wasn't playing. And I, now I feel bad because it might have been the best game of the night, according to the stats. I got to rewatch that one, too. All right, man, that's all we got for today, man. I I, I got to figure out how not to have these videos be a thousand minutes long. But I just have a lot to say. When I when I spend a full day watching hoops, there's a lot to be said. And my notes, yeah, I didn't even hit everything. But at this point, it is what it is. Leave a like, subscribe, and I appreciate you.